Okay, so we are going live. Very excited for today. So first of all, for those who don't know, we've been planning this event for quite a bit. Uh, it was Ray's idea, so it's very excited. So first of all, I believe this is a quite relevant moment of recollection. Uh, I'm very honored to be able to host this topic. Uh, when Ray and I spoke, it was uh, very much he told me about what was happening uh, the lake in Tanzania and the, the issues. And I think that all the way, I'm sure we'll, we'll provide more details uh, afterwards. I think it's relevant to, to understand this is an example of communication that is inclusive, being able to talk about topics that sometimes are not touched or are more specific, because of course, as we do realize climate change is happening, uh, even in our homes, you know, many people don't want to realize, but it's happening close to us, even though it seems like it's happening far away from us. So I think it's very important that what will be said today actually gets out and gets shared with as large audience as we can and gets known what are the stories to be told and that we get your opinion about what are the policies. So that will be the second session. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself as well. I'm Asia, I'm founder of Rethinking Climate. Our objective is to talk about the complexity of climate change and also environmental communication, including inclusiveness and being able to touch upon stories that are uh, closer to the people. So um, in, in this scenario, uh, I'm just very honored again to uh, host this conference. I would like to thank all the speakers. It took a while, it took a lot of energy, it took the team to, to get this conference going. And we'll be touching upon specific but very relevant topics. And I hope that this is just the beginning of a series of events, which if you're an interest in you can certainly get in touch with us and can touch with Ray and we can, we can plan truly the stories you have to share. So I would like to thank also the organizations that have agreed to support this. So Yango, Vijana Think Tank, Isaac Italy and Isaac Tanzania, Earth Day Network, the Human Dignity Environmental Care and the Training and Consultancy for Sustainability as well as the Climate Social Forum, which is one of our partners. So I am gonna stop talking now and give the word to Ray, who's our expert uh, to start with and uh, very much looking forward to a fruitful discussion. Thank you so much, Aisha, for um, quite a thorough um, introduction and briefing about um, uh, this session. And um, I would really like to express my um, uh, utmost um, appreciations to all the speakers who have allowed uh, to, you know, to have this opportunity to share this experience uh, uh, with each of you. We look forward to be learning, uh, to hear about the different experiences. Um, just briefly, my name is Ray, um, Ray Kiliho. I uh, represent Vijana Think Tank, is a local um, youth network that is really geared to bring, um, uh, to be center for regional conversation and, you know, bring uh, young people to be part of, um, you know, discussion and to find uh, lasting sustainable solutions to developmental challenges. And before we uh, go deep, I think I would like to share just a little bit the connectivity, uh, which I find myself with Lake Tanganyika. Um, of course, on my background, that's uh, one of the views that really fascinated me um, growing up by the lake. And um, for those who know, for those who don't, Lake Tanganyika is the deepest lake in Africa and is the largest among the Abitin Reef Lakes. The basin has a population of more than 10 million people. Um, the countries in the basin are among the poorest in the world. So Lake Tanganyika also has one of the fresh, um, the richest freshwater ecosystems in the world, which uh, over 2000 species, uh, 500 of them are not found anywhere on earth. So uh, they're proud to call Lake Tanganyika their home. So Lake Tanganyika, um, documentary fisheries yield about 160,000 to 200,000 metric tons of fish per year. It employs around um, 100,000 people and provide up to 40% of protein needed for around 1 million people. So Lake Tanganyika is threatened by, of course, high population, overuse of, uh, you know, the natural resources that extra um, the lake itself, but then the supporting ecosystems and leading out to the lake. Um, the other threat to Lake Tanganyika is invasive species. Uh, there's an issue of um, habitat degradation. There's an issue of pollution and, of course, um, climate change. So um, what really uh, fueled to, uh, for us to consider this conversation was um, a couple of uh, two years ago, 
um, there has been a tremendous increase in work, uh, water, lake water level. This has been, of course, as a result of um, intensive rains over the past two to three years. And so for those who have been following, we might have noticed and learned about um, you know, flooding in areas of Burundi, the communities that uh, used to uh, live so close by the lake. Um, there has been issues of um, you know, uh, increasing uh, temperature uh, affecting the nutrient uh, capabilities of the lake and especially um, uh, affecting fish species and habitat. So all of these things are happening. And, uh, you know, as humans, we uh, play a vital role into a lot of what is happening. So this is why we think this uh, conversation is very important and we would love to, um, to extend it to hear all about your thoughts and to see uh, what we can collectively do to at least, you know, uh, re revise the impacts of what is happening to, to Lake Tanganyika. So um, I hope to be sharing a lot more um, as we go ahead and uh, most very much open to learn from each of um, the experts group. I appreciate that each of you have been doing tremendous work on various areas um, across different, different uh, places. So um, I thank you all for um, being here with us and Asia, uh, over to you, thank you. Thank you very much. So again, as uh, Ray anticipated, not only the importance of this topic today, but also the fact that this session is very important to stay in the second time, second session, because it will be divided in four different groups, uh, blue economy, uh, land use change, local communication, as youth activism, you'll be able to choose which table you prefer. Moderators will be explaining you a bit very easily the topic and then work together with you to draft a few policy points you will have Again, we calculate about an hour and 45 minutes, maybe longer, maybe less, depending on how, how much you really want to go in depth. That's really up to you. So I'm very excited about this. So I'll give it a word to our first uh, great guest. So uh, John Gray, he's Operation Facilitation Communication Children Youth Major Group of the UN Environment Program, as well as founder of Hired Consult. So John, thank you very much for attending with us today and I'll pass that on to you. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. For this um, singular honor, um, I really appreciate this uh, invitation from the youth space to share knowledge on the thematic areas in focus and also about uh, children and youth major group to United Nations Environment Program, the official um, youth group to UNEP. So I think um, I will first share a bit of who we are, what we do, and how everyone can get involved. So um, the official role of the Youth Engagement Mechanism to UNEP, we act as the group for negotiations at the United Nations Environment Assembly and other processes and activities of UNEP. <clears throat> We are fully recognized and supported by UNEP, where we bring um, together young people from different regions, ethnicity, economic background, to inspire local action nationally and internationally towards uh, environmental conservation, environmental governance, youth um, activism, and also, most importantly, the interest of the youth. So we say that it's a, a collective gathering of both individuals and young or youth organizations that work in the environmental conservation space. And our only mandate is what representing young people's voices in governance and conservation. So basically, this, this is what we do. Now with the issue I state, how connecting youth and activism in addressing land use, climate change, and its impacts uh, in the world. I will not talk much. I'll just go straight practically to what has to be said and what has to be done. The first and foremost is as young people, we are all positioned to build and support the healthy and well-being of future generations. 
And it's not just about future generations, the present. Because if there is no present, her doubts will even have a future. So the ideology should be now for us to act now because climate change has indirect effects on health, well being. And all this is due to ecological changes, food, water insecurity, uh, climate sensitive, uh, infectious diseases which are even spread by animals and other things. And even looking at COVID-19, that just happened. And also other social and economic impacts of climate change may even include uh, forced migration because everyone wants comfort. So they will definitely be moving from one place to the other where they can find peace, they can find food, they can find shelter. And even climate change has the effect of causing civil conflicts, the loss of homes and livelihoods, considering uh, flash floods, considering uh, droughts, considering um, all other negative uh, repercussions of that, and even essential services such as education and healthcare. So, as young people, you need to understand that. Everyone is eager to contribute towards this climate emergency and environmental issues. And uh, with the wonderful uh, concept notes that you sent around on your lake, that also needs attention. Because looking at the millions of school going uh, students who are marching for greater action from governments to fight climate change, I would say the youth opposition to be the four uh, runners of policy making, of decision making, because at the end of the day, we bear the impact of the final decisions that our leaders put forth in books for us to um, follow. Um, however, it's, it's, it, there is a drawback because we don't have all the skills. We don't have the financial, the political, the technical resources to tackle these challenges and impacts of climate change and other environmental issues. And also the issue of gender inequality as well and other social norms that come in play. So we have a right to make decisions about our own lives, our own health and our own well-being. And hence, the fight cannot stop with you. The fight cannot stop with me. It has to continue because we should be the drivers of our own destiny. We should be the one to change what we want to change. When we must be the one to see the change happen. And that means that we must keep fighting for a worthy cause. So um, on that note, I think I will stop here. If uh, anyone wants to, I'm, I'm not a lecturer. I just speak fast and just talk straightforward. So uh, no matter where we live, no matter who we are, where we come from, uh, we can all play a part for climate action, for good health, for good education, and we can make the change we want to see. And it, that depends on where and how we want to go to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. I think that's a very important message, reason why we're here today. And we're really exchanging opinions about this, which again, they're mostly facts and, and trying to really collaborate in solutions. What you said is very important about uh, also immigration and COVID has truly demonstrated how delicate the ecosystem around us is. And it doesn't matter which country you are in, boundaries are very much a social construction because the planet is everybody's and we must be able to uh, take care of it. So I think it's a really great transition to our first also set of expert speakers. So John, thank you very much for your time. If you do have questions, please leave them in the chat. We'll take time maybe at the end. Uh, we just have three speakers and then we can open a bit of a discussion. So Maliha Sumar, she's a representative of Flip Floppy Project, which has to do with waste plastic. And today I pass the word to her to talk about a little bit the importance of social justice and environmentalism in Tanzanian land use. So Maliha, thank you very much for being with us today tell us a little bit about this 
you're muted sorry i know i don't like to do that but <laughs> sorry um yeah hi everyone um i'm so pleased to be here um it's so nice to finally meet you asia and ray um after talking for so long on email um and yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Um, so Asante Sana for the opportunity. Um, I'll just explain a little bit about uh, the Fit Floppy and what we do. Um, so the Fit Floppy itself is essentially the world's first DAO made entirely from waste plastic that was collected in the beach uh, around uh, Lamu Island in Kenya. And essentially what we did is we shred the plastic and then we melt it into planks of wood and we built the DAO and we covered it with around 33,000 flip flops. Um, so that would be the footwear of around 1 million people. Um, so yeah, essentially, um, I'm very happy that we're even looking at policies here um, because, sorry, my voice is, um, is going a little bit. I'm not feeling the, yeah, anyway, the flu is going around. Um, but yeah, so at the Flip Floppy, our main mission um, is we're preparing a bill to be taken to the East African community um, to hopefully see the end of single use plastics in East Africa. Um, so plastics is, you know, uh, more of like my um, background. Um, and yeah, so um, land use is also, I'm not an expert on land use. Um, let me just put that out there. But yeah, it's definitely something that's very important. Um, to climate change, and we've seen the impact of how land use, the changes in land use, how it has impacted the climate all over the world, you know, so like the Amazon fire, you know, that happened a few years back that really you, you can see the link between the change in land use and the massive fire that caused a lot of, you know, destruction to natural habitats, biodiversity loss and things like that. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna jump right into it. Um, later on, I will leave our website in the chat box if anyone would like to just have a browse on what we do. Um, so yeah, um, I'm just gonna go right into land use and we, um, our main um, point like of work in Tanzania is in Mwanza, so around Lake Victoria. Um, so yeah, I'm very pleased to, you know, um, focus on a lake because I think that lakes are very vulnerable to climate change and the impacts of climate change. And there are a lot of communities, you know, habitats. And like Ray said, there are species that are in Lake Tanganyika, which are, you know, nowhere else. Um, and that brings me to the point that even the land surrounding Lake Tanganyika is very um, created by nature with a purpose, you know, all of the plants there are serving a purpose in that ecosystem. Um, and that's really something that um, I feel we overlook, um, you know, sort of native species, you know, of plants that actually carry out roles in ecosystems. Um, and although agriculture is a good thing, I think planning land use around the lake is definitely something that's very important and something also that I observed um, while we were in Mwanza, um, <clears throat> excuse me, is, you know, there's so much um, unofficial, you know, like trade going on right by the lakeside, you know, which is not um, in line with what actually the land in that area should be used for. Um, and also, you know, a lot of businesses, and I think there are a lot of stakeholders um, you know, who come into question when you're talking about land use, you know, so it would be hotels, it would be farmers, people who have shops, you know, who trade fish by the lake. Um, and yeah, I'm very excited to get more into the discussion, um, you know, and um, yeah, I'm welcome for any questions, if anyone has any questions, um, but yeah. Great. Uh, you also mentioned another good point. So at the beginning, we talked about the fact that the land itself has uh, um, very much the importance of existing not only in the ecosystem, but if you have floods, of course, that's an issue because it impacts whatever it's around, both natural and human based. So, of course, you, we must re understand that balance and it's crucial and respect the lake, lake because you can't control nature and that's part of you know our continuous uh, respect and taking care of what's around us for this reason so absolutely again questions please jot them down in the chat and Malia you can answer them uh, just as we finish so there'll be a chance again to discuss this 
very much. So again, when we talk about conservation, I think that's what where you were going, Maria. I'll move on to Sarah. Uh, Sarah Pima, she's uh, represent Huderfo, so they are the uh, human dignity and environmental care, which I think connects very well to what you mentioned. So Sarah, I'll pass you on to a word. So thank you very much as well for, you know, coming here and telling your story. Sarah, you muted. Sorry, I always have to do this and my apologies. <laughs> Hi, can you hear me? Ah, okay. Yes, Hi, uh, yeah. Hi, Ray. Hi, everybody. I'm happy to be here and thanks, Maria, for the intro. My name is Sarah Pima. I'm representing Hodefo. Uh, we are dealing with waste management, uh, gender and climate change, as well as uh, environmental conservation and blue carbon ecosystem, marine and forest. Um, I'm here today, we are talking about environmental conservation. Thanks, Ray, for the introduction. I'm curious, waiting for the uh, brew economy part. Okay. Um, um, about environmental conservation, waste management, and recycling in Tanzania. Uh, general, environmental conservation, um, it, the cause, uh, who, who, human are the cause who are uh, destruct the environment. So uh, human activities, like um, when we say about the climate change, human activities is 95 uh, cause uh, or bring the impact of climate change. So uh, when we say about environmental conservation, we are dealing with deforestation and sustainable agricultures and everything concerning uh, destruction of the environment. So in Tanzania, there's a lot of challenge, even there's a lot of opportunities based on environmental conservation as well as waste management and recycling and as whole. Well. Um, even uh, I'm happy to hear about the um, uh, about the boat, the plastic boat. Even uh, we have a lot of young, uh, young youth and women who are dealing with plastic. We were they are converting plastics to paving to paving tiles. This has proved very uh, effective in our country. But according to, uh, let me go to the police issues. Our police, uh, we thank our government for considering about the waste management. Now we see it was not like that before, now, but now it is opportunity and it is inclusive in, in every police, even the new environmental police, which was launched this year, but it, it was for 2021. Uh, issue of waste management, they are given much priority as well as recycling issue and e-waste. So uh, this consideration move people, a lot of people, a lot of business, even private sector and development partner to, to, to give a big eye on sector of environment. And so in general, they will help in environmental conservation and as well as uh, uh, the voices on policy, enhance policy so that we can have a good policy. But we have a different challenge as the policy on the exportation issue for the product which are, are produced uh, after recycling, as well as uh, expert technology. Those are the challenge we are facing on recycling issues, uh, recycling business, and as well as um, fund for, for producing a quality product, which can go to, uh, we can export to different countries in general. But as um, now we can say, uh, uh, even our NDC in the, we, in the commitment, this is one of the sectors which they put a big eye because when we, we do deforestation, we, uh, we are going to challenge on the environmental conservation. So even the deforestation issue in Tanzania now we are, the government, every party is playing his role or her law so that to make sure the issue of def deforestation is, is, is considering all they are taking action. So from low level to higher level, from local government, from the private sector, development partners, civil society organization, youth and different groups, we are paying much atten attention on, defore uh, on deforestation issue. Although the rate of deforestation increase, uh, it was 373 per hectare, now it is 464. So there's a big problem and we commit to reduce uh, greenhouse emission 30 to 35 
So this is a challenge up to now for, uh, for general when we are doing uh, environmental conservation on the forest sector, on the deforestation sector. But we are happy that the policy uh, in the government and um, uh, in the different uh, uh, civil society are given much attention on environmental conservation, not like before. Before it was only those who are dealing with the environment, it's their duty. When we go to beach cleanup, when we go to different uh, movement, it is those CSOs or NGO which are dealing. But now it is everyone with issues and they are putting in their policy, even the banks, even the private sector. So we are hoping for the best on the issue of environment um, conservation as well in, in waste management as well as recycling. Um, and when we, um, when we say in general about um, involvement uh, of uh, other people, other groups like women, as uh, the first uh, speaker mentions as a gender inequality, gender must be inclusive. So our, um, our, our law or our take home or our message or our recommendation on, on environmental conservation, waste management and recycling is women should be considered and use because women should be considered because they are playing a big part in environment management. Like um, they have different influence, different skills, different knowledge, which can help in environmental conservation as well. Considering from marine, from forestry, from different agriculture, like Tanzania, we depend on agriculture. So um, with it drought, the impact of climate change, like flood, like rising of sea level, it uh, bring a lot of impact in uh, to community, especially to women who are depending on um, food for from different sources like forestry, like agriculture, like marine. So the gender issue should be considered in uh, dealing, in planning, financing, even in decision making on the issue concerning environment, waste management, and climate change as a whole. But also. Um, the, we, we are hoping for the best on the coming COP so that the gender issue will be, um, the, the solution will come so that we have a clear transparent, transparency and a clear uh, commitment from each country. So in this COP27, we are hoping for the best on issue for environmental conservation and um, recycling as well as waste management uh, so that we can uh, include in our commitment also in the after five years. But um, all in all, our message, or oh, my message is everyone has a lot to pray. We cannot, uh, it is everyone business. This is what is not a someone business, it is, it is our business. We have to be responsible and integrate as, as, as our current um, IPCC report, this mitigation report, he say we have to integrate every sector in climate, um, uh, in climate action. So everyone has a lot to play. Every sector has a lot to play on environmental conservation, waste management, so that we can, we can reduce or we can adapt and mitigate the impact of climate change. And uh, the final thing I want to talk about is um, um, the issue of waste management. I think there's a lot of opportunity in Tanzania on the waste management. I call the use to engage and I call the development partners and other international organization also to support because waste management like us, so therefore we are doing, we are converting food waste to fertilizer and our fertilizer is so organic, we can use in different purpose, but also we are converting uh, the food waste you know, like coconut, bananas, peels and different um, uh, product from agriculture to alternative charcoal. When we put more, um, into this, we produce alternative charcoal. So people will not uh, cut uh, forest and use, um, uh, and use uh, the, uh, the charcoal from the trees, from the forest. They will use this organic waste. And while we are doing this, we are, we are reducing the methane. So we are protecting the, our environment, even reduce the methane, which uh, in end lead to climate change. So uh, I think uh, we need to in invest more we need to put more pressure, we need to teach, we need to do awareness so that we can protect our forest and we can have, uh, we can enter into the market of carbon market so that our community will be uh, benefited from the forest which are preserving while we can use our waste 
uh, our organic waste or our uh, domestic waste producing alternative charcoal and um, rise our income or income for the different community. Uh, thank you, Asia. Thank you, team. Anything, just come to the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Again, yes, if you do have comments or questions, please leave them in the chat. You'll have a chance after our last speaker, which I will be introducing soon, to just open your mic and we, we will have certainly more time to, uh, to speak. So what Sarah has introduced, I think, are very essential, important um, matters. Also, the fact that if you help reduce the amount of waste that is disposed uh, inappropriately, also preserving nature itself, it's such a very basic thing, but then moving to uh, the positive outcomes that, that simple action can have, such as reducing emissions, such as uh, reducing, um, again, ways that it could be used instead for other values as well, as well for our agriculture, such as the organic waste. So Sarah, I think, has introduced very important um, messages. So now we'll move to our last uh, speaker of our first session. Um, so Rhoda uh, Schauza, so I hope I pronounced your surname correctly. I apologize if I haven't. Uh, she's a geography and environmental graduate and an activist. So maybe Rhoda, you can tell us a little bit more about why it practically it's so important, the work that we must do in the topics already mentioned and a little bit about your uh, activism. So thank you very much for speaking here today. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you, Asia, uh, for introducing me. Uh, my name is Rhoda Francis Jausa. I'm a graduate, geography, a Bachelor of Geography and Environmental Studies. And currently, I'm working with Tanzania Youth Biodiversity Network. Um, going straight to, to the topic concerning the like Tanganyika issue and all about climate change. I, in my opinion, it, it is very important to talk about, about these issues since um, a lot of what is happening in like Tanganyika is not known to, to others. I can say even myself, I've discovered a lot that I didn't know um, two or three days. Um, which is going on there, like the, the, the increase of the water level, the water level rise, this is all due to, to human activities, just like what the previous speaker has said, Sarah, that most of the, of, the, of the activities that the humans are doing are causing all of this. Uh, mostly like in the, around the Lake Tanganyika, most of the, the, the houses there have, have been destroyed due to floods. And since the Lake Tanganyika is a transboundary lake, so I think it's really important that most of the environmentalists or the state activists who are from all the countries, Zambia, Burundi, Congo, should really talk about this and what is going on there. I have been talking to several organizations, like there's this organization called the Friends of Lake Tanganyika, who are there, they know a lot about Lake Tanganyika. Um, the person who is, the, who is there watching over the lake and dealing with, uh, they have been dealing with agroforestry just so so that they can they can help to to make the deforestation which has been destroying the lake and the surrounding areas. Also, um, this needed to 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 make also the, the farmers, they needed the farmers more so that the farmers can plant the trees. Just like the ethnic network, I think, if I can't recall, it's last year or 2020 or 20, 2021, <laughs> I can't recall. Um, they, they started a project 
that our country coordinator, Gami Dabdobasel, went there and they planted trees, I think like 4,000, not certain, but they planted a lot of trees so that they can, they can help the deforestation to not grow. Also, um, I think about the West, the West thing, West management, it's all about education. I think people need to be educated about, about this waste management and everything going on there. Since not, I think not everybody knows how they, they can deal with this situation about climate change. And this waste management thing, it's also destroying the the fishing industry. I think Ray will talk about it, um, the blue economy. Since most of the illegal, illegal fishing is done of the breeding sites, that's what they, they, they call them, the breeding sites. So it's, it's affecting, it's affecting what the, the, the fishing industry there in Lake Tanganyika. Well, I think a lot of things Ray will talk about it, but what I really, I really want to, 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 to say is that we need to, to raise our voices and talk a lot about this, these issues which are not really talked about. Since I don't think the organizations, the environmental organizations, they really do go there to Kigoma and see what's going on, really going on. It's, it's just been said by few people, I think. Few people are just saying it, and it's not really, really. They're not really giving it that urgent, the urgent attention that it needs. So, yeah, I think I'll end there. <laughs> Thank you so much. And Thank I hope. You. I hope the I hope today today conversation will will make a difference. Absolutely, we'll try to make it a difference. So again, it's very important to bring this conversation forward, even after today. Uh, bother your neighbor, bother your grandma, as you always say. The poor grandma always used as an example of people to speak with. But I think it's very essential the message of sense behind about sharing awareness and making so that we what we explain uh, what we do in our every daily activism is also easy or simple and inclusive for others to comprehend just as much as Ruda very nicely and beautifully explained. So I invite people to ask questions. Please open your mic, open your video. This is a moment to really exchange. So the experts are here to uh, really exchange opinions. Uh, Ray, do you have any comments you want to make just to really make it uh, fluid and open the discussion? Yeah, yeah, uh, thank you so much. I really, uh um caught uh, i think i noted a couple of uh, very strong um you know um comments and i think it really highlights that importance of why we should be um having even deeper conversations one of the things i've heard um from uh both of the speakers cutting across is the issue of um human over dependency and human impact to climate change so like one of the perspective that i would also like to ask ourselves um uh, as I mentioned, I've, uh, I've, had, I've spent most of the time in Kigoma. So the people don't really feel like they are, you know, we are harming the environment because we like to do it, because this is, or uh, let us do some, you know, a degradation. No, so it happens that, you know, the people depend on the resources for their survival. And so there's that um, intricate relationship between survival and you know uh, what is happening uh, uh, in the environment. So I would really uh, like to see how we expose this and see how we can connect more to this um, concern. Also, something also uh, Dr. John spoke about the issue of um, migration of uh, people and communities. It is becoming a very serious issue. It has been dubbed now as climate refugees, and it is expected that there'll be a lot of people um, forced to move from one part to the other part um, as a result of climate change. Uh, that could be either uh, their land is no more very productive or uh, they've been uh, you know, forced to evacuate because of floods or extreme temperatures. 
So I really, um, uh, I, I really uh, quote this um, few of these words, and I'm happy to see um, what other speakers have in terms of opinions or if they have questions to our experts and the individuals who have had various experiences across this um, uh, thematics. So um, I think, uh, like Asia mentioned, I think uh, if individuals would love to have uh, maybe questions or um, highlight something, I think um, this would be a good opportunity to hear your thoughts. Asia, um, if there's any um, hands raised or I don't know how. Uh, yeah, hand raised, open yeah. your microphone, please. The floor is to anybody who wants to make a comment. Hi, Lei. Go ahead. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, okay. So, okay, thank you. Uh, I just want to ask you, you know, the issue of um, this climate refugee, it is everywhere now. Even Tanzania, we experience this. So, uh, do we have the police or so how, oh, how these people are being taken to? How can, are they going to the loss and damage uh, sections or what, how, how can we handle those people? Because even in, uh, in Dar es Salaam, we experienced uh, these climate re uh, refugees at um, Kulanga. And a lot of people, like 300 in one village, they are shifting to another because of the rising of sea level and the intrusion of water to, to their houses, they're being destroyed. So how, how these people are going to be helped or taking care? Do we have uh, any special uh, special police or assistance to these people or other countries do they have or what can we treat this issue? Is, is it in the loss and damage and how can we sort it? Thank you. Um, thank you, Sarah. I think I'll share a bit of my thoughts on this. And I, um, um, so how it has been happening, um, uh, you know, when the extremes happen and then they fall under a category of disasters, until they fall under a category of disaster, that means uh, to a certain magnitude, uh, then is where uh, the government responds. Is a, a good exam example for Tanzania. Uh, we have, um, a, I would say, is it a committee? I think it's a special um, section under prime minister's office. Uh, which is responsible for disaster and such relief um, um, emergencies in the country. In, in, and also that involves coordinating um, government um, intervention as well as the private sector and humanitarian organizations to respond to um, such disasters. Now, the concern that if it has been, you know, clearly highlighted as part of policy, uh, the composition of climate refugees, I think I will have to find out more about that. I'm not so sure. Uh, but I think it raises an interesting um, opportunity to see how this thing's happening. Um, I remember we've had a bit of similar conversation with Sarah in the past, and we've talked with some of the colleagues. Um, there are areas where people are forced to um, take uh, very extreme methods to protect um, you know, the resources for the communities. I, I, I have seen it happening, especially in Kenya, um, where Kenya has been uh, dramatically affected by drought. And so you find um, headers communities, uh, you know, are forced to uh, go where they can find water for the animals or, uh, you know, be able to, to raise the animals. But then um, you find yourselves going into areas that have uh, political boundaries or, you know, dem demarcations. And so you were seen as an intruder. But then to you, I think that translates to um, the survival necessity. I was listening to these farmers and herders. Uh, all they say, I, th I think it is very important. They say um, they are ready to do whatever is possible uh, to make sure the animals, you know, get water and pasture, because uh, that's the only thing they have that translates uh, to their life. And so I think it's important to uh, hear other thoughts if other co uh, colleagues um, have an experience of this, if there could be countries that um, have policies and how they address these policies. But in Tanzania, I think um, I am not so sure if there is a specific policy of crime and refugees, but then when we uh, when it happens at ex uh, extreme circumstance, I believe that is when 
um, interventions to uh, you know provide humanitarian and relief really kicks in. So um, Sarah, I hope I have shared a bit of my experience. Please, if this could be anybody with this experience, would love to hear from them. Please just add anything. Um, Go ahead. Yes, please. Okay. Hello, everyone. I am Abdul Nasri Jumbe. I'm the ISEC National Director here in Tanzania. That is the International Student Environmental Coalition. And um, I was quite moved when I first saw the ad of the climate change in Tanzania and also including the Lake Tanganyika. And since I'm from Tanzania, it's my homeland, so I was quite touched. And um, also when I saw that um, the discussion will also involve connecting the representative with, with youth in order to address these issues of climate change in the blue economy and how people are impacted by the climate change. I was quite, quite moved there and I liked it. That that's why I joined the call. And um, since we have started the discussion, I've learned a lot from the speakers. Thank you very much. And um, I think I'm, maybe in order for our discussions to be more effective is um, maybe we could try and then invite those who are directly involved in the policy makers. I'm speaking about the representatives who can appear in the parliament and bring these issues to the speaker and they can be debated in the parliament so that they can be amended and make, made, made into laws and um, like this, maybe they, they, they can get our thoughts and um, we, the impact can be less. And also, since um, we involve youth in addressing these challenges, I think um, we can start maybe some sort of a movement of uh, people living near the lake. And since this lake is a transboundary lake, which includes the countries of Tanzania, Congo, and Burundi, also, though, all, also those youth can be involved in these talks in order to be more effectively. Um, despite that, uh, 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 apart from that, I'm very thrilled to join this call. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm, I usually speak with your representative from Italy, Giacomo. So I had a pleasure, very happy that he got me in contact with you. So thank you for attending. I hope you can stay for the workshops. Anyone else would like to add their own impression, comments, questions? Go, Ray, always with something very interesting to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I would love to hear um, if I'm, I'm not sure if John is still with us. Um, I think he. Yeah. Uh, he just um, slipped off, but I, I, I wanted to learn. Uh, let's say at a global level, or uh, let's say at policy, say um, at maybe uh, the UNFCCC or um, at the UNEP, if the issue of climate refugees has been uh, noted and if it is uh, at some point um, um, underway, so as to see if um, this thing is really um taking shape or it can be something we really need to explore it um, independently so maybe if any colleague has any um, yeah right so yeah. maybe maria she represents yango they generally have a very good understanding of this so maria if you do want to make any comment uh on this it's very important so if i'm not mistaken the the un years ago was having a bit of a struggle to define climate refugee because it was very complex and it was sometimes nationally based so that made it hard to understand who is a climate refugee, why are they moving, is it because of the climate, is it because of other circumstances. So it's very important how you, um, the fact that you're bringing it up. So Maria, would you like, I think she just left the call. Uh, never mind. So anyone else knows about it? So Mozam, you also, Mozam is a member of Rethinking Climate. He's also a younger member. Maybe Mozam, you can uh, tell us a little more about uh, climate refugees if you have an idea or a bit of the global uh, chat about this. Maria, are you with us?
Okay. Now, if anyone else would like to maybe reply to uh, to Ray, comment, and if you have any questions. Uh, I see. Yes. Yeah, Lady, uh, for what I know, yeah, UNFCC, the chairman spoke about the climate refugee, but there's no, um, even in, in those commitments we see on COP26, there's no mention anywhere about uh, climate refugees, but he spoke when there's the issues, he spoke two times about climate refugee. I think they are working on it, and uh, it's going to be a, an issue in the coming COP, also on COP27. Uh, so we are hoping uh, some issues because um, some countries, this is becoming a big issues now. The discussion will be on, on COP27, but uh, there's no clear policy up to now. I'm following UNFCC, but they about speaking, they spoke and they say this is becoming an issues, but there's no clear policy about the climate refugees. Thank you. Very, very, very uh, great intervention and quite clarified many of the points that Ray and I were, were talking about. Any other comments or questions? Okay, so uh, Ray, maybe you wanna close this first session with a couple of words before we move on to the uh, workshop. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you, Asia. So um, I think as we have heard from uh, most of our speakers, um, really the issue of uh, threatened lake cuts across, um, you know, multi the perspective and dimensions. Uh, we see issue of um, economic, we see issues of governance, we see issues of ecological. So um, I think it is a very interesting um, place to be looking into the issues and trying to dig what could be possibly be a um, more concrete way forward into really addressing um, these issues. Um, one important thing um, that I would like to also um, share with you, it is actually a quote from uh, one of my favorite uh, explorer photographers. Um, I, he has a Polish name and I really can't pronounce it properly, but he said, I think um, one of the things that we really need to do, um, like one of the colleagues mentioned that uh, to, to raise awareness, I think um, one, uh, the young generation, for instance, in Tanzania today, uh, over 50% is below the age of 19 today. Uh, so, which means in the next couple of years, um, this will be the young people, the mid-age group. And so most of uh, the climate impacts that uh, probably now could be seen as just conversations or are, are happening at a certain level, there will be a reality then. So um, the question will, will be, how do we engage everyone meaningfully um, to take part in this um, in this uh, conversation, in, the, in this action. I think that is one um, element that we have to be looking at. The second element is meaningful um, engagement of uh, somebody mentioned about policy makers and decision makers. Um, I, I think, um, I, 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 I think um, Jumbe mentioned about bringing the conversation to uh, policy makers at parliamentary level. So um, I think I concur to all of this. And so just to finalize with a quote from this um, photographer that I follow quite well, um, he said, I think it's very important to let people know and show how beautiful our world is because people would only protect what they love. They would only love what they know. So um, I think um, this can be the spark that we need to explore these um, dimensions, what is happening, how much it is happening, and then we can have a more fruitful, um, uh, fair action to uh, what we can do to save our planet and, and our lake. So um, without further ado, um, I'm happy unless Asha, you have um, anything um, on this, but we've heard from our speakers. And so I, I believe what would be next would be um, going to workshop or would be going to segments. Uh, we, uh, we have four topics that we will be um, focusing on to really concretely see the de deliberations of those segments. So we'll be working on 
um, uh, Blue Economy. That's the first segment. We'll also be working on um, land use change. That will also be a separate thematic um, address. The third uh, would be engagement of local communities, the role of local communities. So we have a segment of local communities. And the fourth um, will be youth activism. So um, I think we will be engaging deeply to have meaningful um, outlook into what are the issues, what can we do, and uh, how do we would like to see it happening. So um, I believe my colleague will share uh, about how the break uh, the breakaway rooms will happen. And, yes. So yeah. um, sorry, Ray. Just to close. Yeah. Uh, first of all, again, I uh, thank you all for those who could attend. Uh, this is yeah. That's how Ray. We're going to be dividing this. So I invite Chiara to uh, uh, close the live session. So thank you for those who are online following us. See you the next time. Um, so that then we can uh, move on to.